All right, y'all, I got a quick little video today. Got the mango. I think this is Valencia Pride. Judging by the shape and how big it gets, if anybody knows, let me know what this is because I really need to ID these mangoes on here at Mary's property. Um, but anyways, I got a quick little video showing kind of how, um, how fluid bananas are in agroforestry systems. So you can see here, this dwarf namois is uh, ready to harvest. It's not the biggest rack in the world. Uh, we've been having some monster racks and it's actually a nice change of pace to harvest and a chill little one like this. Uh, but you can see um, that this uh, a grafted mango tree is kind of, you know, getting to the point where it needs its sunlight. It needs the, the fresh air all around it. It needs a little bit more um, open environment because um, because it's fruiting and yeah, you know, eventually you want, uh, we want to have this mango be the center of attention here at this space. But that doesn't mean that we can't have bananas um, surrounding it uh, at, the, at the beginning. So when this, when this uh, what I think is a Valencia Pride, but when this grafted mango was younger, that banana and this banana, and of course this banana over here and all the bananas all around kind of helped shelter it helped it from the from the potential frost in the winter but now this uh this this mango is well above my head um and it's got its legs underneath it has really nice structure it's ready to rock and roll it doesn't need the bananas anymore so we wait until the bananas are ready to harvest and then we manage the bananas and you'll see the difference of what it is right now, which is, uh, you know, they're still cooperating for the most part. But if I were to leave this, all the bananas around it unmanaged, then this grafted mango will definitely feel the, the getting, you know, the, will definitely feel the effects of getting stifled and getting outshaded and getting all crammed up in between all these other bananas. So I'm going to do this quick little managing so you can see the difference of what one harvesting one banana will do to the overall effect of, uh, of the target species, which in this case is the uh, grafted mango. And uh, I'll show you this real quick. So if I can please get an ID for all y'all mango nerds out there. Kind of big, kind of got that little S-shaped thing going on. So yeah, let me know. All righty, I'll be right back. All right, y'all, there we have it. The banana, the dwarf Namwa banana has been managed. You can see there it was. And look at that. Uh, pocket of sunlight that comes in now for the uh, for this mango here uh, and all the biomass on the ground I've yet to uh, I've yet to organize seems like it might rain so I wanted to get this video out of the way before it starts raining so look at all this biomass to work with I can either put it on the mango itself to help you know give it some oomph for the fruiting but I'm gonna use it on things that actually need it that are tiny that really 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 need it this thing is ready to go ready to rock doesn't need anything we've opened up sunlight this moringa could shoot up to the sky now a little better and have a little bit more um space to do so so that we can continuously chop and drop this to to feed other plants as well um but yeah that's that's kind of the main thing i wanted to get through in this video is is the fact that there's a reason why bananas are so utilized in centropic agroforestry and agroforestry in general is because they're so um, flexible, you can do whatever you want to them, depending on what you need. In this case, in this case, we got the best case scenario where um, where it didn't the the banana fruit uh, didn't impede on the on the growth of the mango, so we didn't have to cut it early. We could have we waited until the banana was ripe and ready to go. Then we cut it if it was closer say the banana was like planted where this moringa is so yeah if so if the banana was planted closer to this mango then we might not have been able to harvest a rack out of it and had to strictly use the banana as biomass so that uh we can feed the system and let sunlight in but thankfully this was really good spacing so we were able to squeeze that in we were able to get the banana a uh, fruit as well as uh open up the heart, open up the sunlight and get the biomass on the ground and all that other good stuff. So now going forward, this dwarf and banana clump needs to be managed as 
not as a clump and as just kind of like a single banana because this mango is already starting to to do its thing here and like i said before we want this mango to be the star of the show here we don't want the banana to be the star of the show but the banana did its thing it helped the mango grow and it's gonna provide us with some delicious bananas and same with the same with the rest of these of the bananas around it so when there's not a very important target species you have the ability to to let bananas go wild and kind of let them dominate the area but once you do have something that you really care about much more than bananas that's when you really sort of hammer your bananas down to the more healthiest suckers and just kind of leave one max two you know so that the your target species can get um all the love so let me just uh get another little better view of it you can see this mango is trying to trying to get sunlight over here because at the end of the day it is a grafted mango and it does need a little bit of extra sun of more of sun so definitely some managing to do um, going forward to give it what it needs but it hang, it's hang, you know it's doing this thing so yeah that's about it biomass everywhere and uh bananas doing this doing their job doing their part and helping the system uh, go forward in succession so that's all i got for today peace